Hi, my name is Bruce. I'm with Lubrication Technologies and today we're going to go over making an ILC Max Lubrication Pump Power Cord. Uh, what we have here is some basic tools that we're going to need to make the power cord. Obviously we need the power cord itself, I uh, have a basic set of dikes, a set of crimpers specific to the connectors that we will be using, and I also have a set of wire strippers. I have diagrams in front of me. Uh, we have a wiring diagram for a two wire cable and a wiring diagram for a seven wire cable. Each diagram will show what color wire goes into what connector. Uh, there is a seven pin connector. So you have uh, on the back side options of one to seven. When you're using a seven wire cable, you will end up using all seven ports uh, complete with the liquid tight or uh, liquid tight seals to prevent water intrusion. On the two wire cable, we'll only be using two ports and the rest will have blanking plugs again to complete that watertight seal. So in the uh, wire connection kit, we're going to have the connector itself, which screws on to the side of the pump. We're going to have the uh, cable harness protector that is an elbow style and will connect over this once the wiring connection has been made. We have our plug seals for unused ports and we have our wire seals that need to be crimped onto the wires once the uh, wire connection has been made. And we have our terminal connectors which we'll go over showing you how to crimp onto the wire. Today we're going to make a two wire connection. So what I like to do is uh, first of all is take my wire connector and because we're only going to use ports one and two. We're going to go ahead and before we do anything else, we're going to plug off uh, starting at seven and work our way around to uh, leaving two and one open. As you can see, I've already started to put in the uh, blank seals. I'm going to go ahead and add the last two in here. So we're going to add this into uh, port number four and this will be on port number three. And then we'll be left with port number one and two to make our wire connection. So what we need to do is we're going to take our two wire power cable and first we need to strip the outside sheathing. So what I'm going to do is before I strip, we need to make, take a note of we don't want excess wire exposed outside the connector. So we only want to strip off really what we need to go in the connector. So if you look, probably about that much will do us. So I'm just going to hold that place with my thumb. And we're going to strip the outside sheathing. Next, we're going to strip the wires themselves. The wires need to be stripped in a manner that is going to allow you to be able to uh, crimp the copper wire onto the first part of the terminal. And then the insulation um, will have to remain in order to crimp the watertight uh, seal over. So generally to do that we're going to strip off approximately that much wire. I'll do that for the white wire as well. And then we're going to twist the wire. Then I need to add on my seal connect uh, my seals, wire seals. So I'm going to slide one on each wire and the barrel end of that needs to go right up to the end of the insulation. You basically want the wire insulation to show right after the seal. I'm going to go ahead and add one onto the white side. So then I'm going to go ahead and just any wire that may have come out of the twist. I'm going to neaten that up. And now we're ready to add on our connector. So we're going to remove these. 
If you are using a seven wire connector, you'll use all of these. We're just gonna make it two, so I'll we'll only need two out of the seven. And this is where our crimpers are gonna come in. So I'm gonna start by adding the wire into the terminal. And the wire should just go underneath the barrel enough to where you're gonna be able to crimp the copper wire and you're also gonna be able to crimp the seal. So now with the wire in the connector, I'm going to take my crimper and the main numbers we're gonna use here, we're gonna use port number three and port number one on the crimpers. Port number three is gonna be used to crimp the copper wire onto the actual terminal itself. So we're gonna take that and insert it into the crimper right up to the nose of the insulation seal. And we're going to crimp. Once that connection is made, that's what that should look like. It's a nice clean connection that you cannot pull off. Next, I'm going to crimp the connector onto the insulation seal. We wanna make sure that that's fully on the seal and that will be using number one on the crimpers. We're gonna go ahead and crimp that like so. It shouldn't be squished, it should be a nice round connection. And those little tabs will end up going into the insulation a little bit. And what that's gonna allow it to do is it holds the seal connector as we push it down inside the terminal. This needs to be dragged down with the connector to make a watertight seal inside the connector. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my connection on the white wire. So again, you can see we have our connector on the wire. We're gonna take our crimpers. Pin number three is going to crimp the connector onto the copper wire. Like so. Again, shouldn't be able to pull that off. And then we're going to take number one and crimp the insulator, the seal onto the pin. So we grab the seal. You can see again, the pins slightly penetrate in there. And that's so as it goes down, it's going to take it down with it. Pin number one on our connector this two wire connector will be positive and pin number two will be negative. So on our two wire connector, we use white as our positive and black as our negative. And what we're simply gonna do is insert this into the connector. And I'm gonna do partial way into one and a partial way into two. So we're starting them both at the same time. And we're gonna work those down there. As you can see, they're not fully seated yet, but they're taking the seal down with them as I push them into the plug. And as these connectors go down inside the plug, what you wanna hear is a click. You should hear a positive click on each one. And once that connection or that click has been made, you will not be able to pull these back out. There is no tool that we own to extract these, so you have to be careful. This is kind of a one-shot deal. Once the connector has been made, if it's not right, we're gonna to have to cut it off and start over again. So I've made my two wire connection, my positive being in one, my negative in two. Again, they have positively clicked in the holes. I cannot pull them out. And next we're going to add on our cap or angle cover. Simply, the cover goes over the wire itself. And as you can see, I left plenty of insulation. So this looks like a nice complete connection coming out of the wire harness. We close this lid. And these tabs need to interlock or connect together. So there's four. There's one in the front, one in the rear, one on top, on the bottom. All of them should click together, giving you a positive connection for that angle and that right there is our finished product for the connector.